Hey guys, so in this video I'm going to show three tricks that I've been using to increase my frames in Fortnite. If you guys haven't seen my last video, it's the long-awaited face reveal, so make sure to check that out. And for the people who have seen it, I want to thank you for the great feedback that I got on it. I also have a different FPS video that I uploaded a couple of months ago, but this video will cover three new tricks that I didn't cover in that one, so be sure to watch that after this one to check out other ways to optimize your PC in Fortnite, so if you combine them, you can get a lot more FPS compared to what you had before. Anyways, let's get into the three new FPS tricks. These will be helpful especially for laptops and slower machines, but should still help even if you already get decent frames. I'll cover pretty much everything I can to help you guys so you don't have any questions or get confused. The first method I found on Reddit from a user called Not Snuffy. This method was made originally by him, so make sure to go thank him and not me as he's the genius behind this new FPS fix. I'll leave a link to his Twitter and the original Google Doc for the fix he created in the description of this video. This method is the most important one I'll cover as it really helps old laptops and bad computers, and I've seen people get over 100 extra FPS from this. So looking at the entire Google Doc now, it's honestly pretty scary and intimidating to look at, but trust me, it's not that bad and this video should make it a lot easier to follow. So as Snuffy talks about in the introduction, what's currently happening with Fortnite is that it doesn't benefit from having a lot of threads. Threads are just processes within your CPU. Even on high-end CPUs, you're only going to get 20 to 30% CPU time utilization. Windows can actually allow us to choose which CPU threads are used, but unfortunately Fortnite's easy anti-cheat system will block any modifications to Fortnite processes. So Snuffy's method teaches us how to set the cores or the threads for the game and which it should run before it launches, meaning it's not going to go against the anti-cheat system and it's not something you can get banned for or in trouble for. In order to do it, what you want to do is go to the Google Doc, which I linked in the description of the video, go to the second step and copy the long hyperlink under the set location sentence. It should look like this. Then open a new tab and paste it, but don't click enter on it. This is important, so make sure you paste it, but do not press enter on it just yet. After that, you're going to want to go down, still underneath the second step, to this table full of processor names and thread arguments. So you should see a bunch of different CPU and processor names, as well as just random numbers like ones and zeros. The table contains Snuffy's advised threads that will enable or disable a certain process, so one if it's enabled or zero if it's disabled, basically allowing us, like I said before, to pick and choose which processes Fortnite will utilize in hopes of giving us more FPS. So find your CPU, if you don't know which CPU you have, you can type in dxdiag into the handy little Windows Cortana search and use the run command. After this loads up, you can see your processor, which is your CPU. So I have an i7-8700. Now that you know which CPU you have, go back to the Google Doc. I'm going to find the advised thread, which is the strand of ones and zeros for the i7-8700 and then copy it. So if you have something else like an i5 or an i9, just go next to it and copy your advised strands of ones and zeros. Then return to the open Google tab, which we had before with the first command that we pasted, but we didn't press enter on. Highlight the ones and zeros after the first percent 22 and before the second percent 22 on the right side of it. Then right click and paste what we just copied from the other Google doc that was specific to our processor. So again, make sure you paste it exactly where I did. Only replace the current ones and zeros that are in between the percent 22s towards the end of the link. Do not remove anything else. All we're doing here is replacing the current thread with the one we'll need for our unique computer. Then go and check which drive you have Fortnite saved onto. So for most people, it's on their C drive, which is what the C at the end of the link stands for. If you're not sure, just pull up your files, then go down to this PC and the devices and drives. I only have one disk, so I know it's on my C drive from the little C we see here, but you may have it on your HDD or your system reserved or some other drive. Just click on each drive and you'll see either Epic Games or Fortnite file within there within the program files. If it is on another disk, just replace the C at the end of the link between the other set of %22s with whatever disk it's on. And it will have a different letter for each different disk or drive. There could be like an M or an E, and it will be in the same spot as the C is on my local disk. Finally, we can hit enter, and then this screen should come up. There are links to Snuffy Stuff, who's the genius behind this method, but we want to go to the bottom and copy the command that says use this as target section of the shortcut. So copy starting from the command.exe all the way over to the end. Now go over to your desktop, right click on it, then go to new and shortcut. 
This prompt will come up and then just paste the command you just copied and name it Fortnite. The last step is to close Fortnite in the Epic Games Launcher if you have it open and running, which you can do by just going to the little arrow next to your time and then right clicking and closing it. To be sure it's closed, you can also just go to your task manager by clicking Control Alt Delete or whichever other way you computer whiz is like and then end the tasks for Fortnite or Epic Games. But if you actually close them the first time, then they shouldn't be running. Now you'll use the new shortcut that we just made to launch Fortnite, so every time you play, use this shortcut so your game will boot up and run with your processor utilized from Snuffy's method. If Epic Games Launcher starts up when your PC boots up, which is only if you turn your PC on and off instead of leaving it on sleep mode, make sure you turn off Epic Games Launcher from starting when your PC restarts. So just type in startup in your Windows search and then uncheck the Epic Games Launcher so it doesn't automatically begin on startup. Now every time you want to play Fortnite, again, use the shortcut and launch Fortnite through that. Don't go through Epic Games Launcher and don't press on the Fortnite icon you might have on your home screen. Just use the shortcut and you'll get much better FPS. As I said before, I've seen a ton of people on Twitter saying it gave them upwards of 100 or 150 FPS and this should be extremely useful for lower tier and not as good computers or PCs. You guys already know my PC is pretty beefy, I usually get a solid like 240 FPS all the time, but I did get an extra like 30 or 40 FPS from this method. If you guys didn't see your processor in the list, this only works for processors with 6 or 8 cores. So something like an i3 only has 2 cores, which is why it's not on the list. Some other things you want to know is that it may take a little longer than it usually does to load up when you first test it out. If it's taking a really long time, like, you know, way longer than it should, just go to the Epic Games Launcher, go to Library, over to Fortnite, and then click on the little settings icon and verify your game files. After that, make sure to close out of the launcher again and then boot up through the shortcut and it should launch up much faster and pretty much as fast as Fortnite usually does. The last thing is that if you notice you're getting worse FPS or not too much of a difference, which really should never happen, all you have to do is just delete the shortcut and then launch Fortnite through the Epic Games launcher like you normally would. So no harm done or anything changed in your computer, you'll just use and boot up Fortnite normally instead of through this new shortcut trick. For the next trick, we'll be looking at the 3D settings within NVIDIA Control Panel. To get there, just right click on your desktop and click on NVIDIA Control Panel. Up towards the top, click on Adjust Image Settings with Preview. Then click on Use My Preference Emphasizing and Emphasize Performance, as we want more frames in Fortnite, so we want the PC to emphasize performance over quality. Next, go to Manage 3D Settings, which is also under the 3D Settings Options tab. So the settings that I'm going to show you, I got from Liquid Chap, and we'll do close to what we just did before. They'll help emphasize your performance and getting more frames over looking good. Filtering off, FXA off, gamma correction on, anti-aliasing mode off. Fast. Okay, go ahead. Anti-aliasing mode off. CUDA GPU all, DSR factors off. Maximum pre-rendered frames, one. Multi-frame sampling, AAA, off. OpenGL rendering, auto-select. Power management mode, prefer maximum performance. Uh, preferred refresh, highest available. Shader cache on, texture fil filtering on. The other one, oh, wait, it allow. Just, on, it just me. Oh, wait, shader cache on, texture filtering. On. And yes. then allow then the filter quality on high performance and then on on off off one so threaded optimization on off off one so if you guys didn't catch all those make sure to go back and watch again i have the same settings so i'll show them on my screen now but i don't want to take up all your time going over each and every one of them as i think chap did a better job than i could if you want me to explain a certain setting just leave a comment and i'll explain what it does but these settings should give you an extra like 10 to 30 fps maybe more if your settings are really screwed up but this should be more of a minor fps boost compared to the first trick what's great about the 3d settings is that in the bottom there's a restore button so if you want to revert any changes you can just click that button but the settings that i showed should be the most optimal nvidia settings for Fortnite, your pc and your monitor the third trick will again be on our pc and it's a process called defragment so to defrag your discs you want to search defragment into the windows search and click on the defragment and optimize drives program by default, the C drive is selected and you can press optimize to manually begin the defragment process. So when you click on optimize, it will analyze and defrag at the same time. You can also stop the defrag process at any time as this may take a while, especially if your PC is full of junk. After the stop button goes away, that means that the defragment process is over so you can just use your PC as normal again. 
What defragmentation does is it rearranges the fragments of data on your PC and restores them into fewer fragments or into a whole file. Defragmentation will reduce access time and will allow storage to be used more efficiently, so it basically makes your PC run smoother and quicker. If you haven't noticed, pretty much all these tricks have to do with boosting your PC's performance instead of targeting just Fortnite. This is because the majority of you guys have a bunch of crap on your PC and it just slows Fortnite down and makes your PC run worse. You could have the same exact specs as someone else, but if they're constantly updating and keeping their PCs and everything else clean and free, they'll get much better performance and FPS than you if you just download a bunch of stuff and forget about it. Overall, if you follow these tricks, you should definitely see improvement in your Fortnite FPS, especially if you're on a laptop or a low-end machine. If you experience any trouble, leave a comment and I'll be sure to get back to you, but just realize all these steps are revertible and none of them can damage or hurt your machine in any way. If this video helped you guys, make sure to leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and to turn on post notifications. There's so many people using my code now and sending me pics, it's kind of getting hard to keep track of everyone. So I'm going to put your names up on the screen now instead of reading them off because it would just take too long. Just know that I really do appreciate all you guys supporting me and using my code. Keep sending me pictures of you guys using code Jerrion, as I'll never stop thanking you guys at the end of videos. It just means I won't be able to read them off every time. Otherwise, that's it from me, and I will see you guys in the next one. Later.